This has become the daily routine now where I remove one game from the wheel because we play it and then I add like three or four more and I'm like, oh my goodness. <laughs> We're never gonna make positive progress. It's impossible. Woo! Who gets it today? Eh? Eh? Ah! This might be the first time that the wheel has brought up a puzzle type game. Hexa turn. Look at that. Can I make the aspect ratio? Correct? That's full screen, huh? This is what this is the aspect ratio you're gonna go with for full screen on a PC game? You know what that means, right? We're playing an iPad game. Alright, let's get in there. Uh play. Package one. How do I play Hexaturn? Click to block. Don't let the triangle reach here, okay? Seems easy. Triangle always picks the shortest path. Okay. So far I think I get it. So definitely stop that guy, and then that guy. bait you into trying to get there. There we go. So he's just trying to chase down any of these bases, basically. You can undo your moves. Oh, via the bottom button. Gotcha. I just click right here. Aha! Just pin the triangle and go on the offensive instead of the defensive. Uh... Who are you gonna go after right now? All right, seems straightforward, maybe even a little repetitive actually so far. Ah. Oh, click to use double turn. Okay. I was gonna say this looks impossible, but that's because it's a tutorial, ha ha. If, if you stuck, oh, okay. You can use bo, oh. Shit. That's what I get for joking about how much, uh... That's what I get for joking about the freaking English problem, is I don't read the tutorial in time. Let's try reloading the level. If you stuck, you can use bonus move here. Okay. Am I stuck, though? There you go. That's where stuck comes in, isn't it? What's bonus move, though? Remember all levels solvable without bonus. Okay. You're gonna start off by going here, but I'm gonna block you off here. All levels are solvable without bonus, but are all levels solvable without double, I wonder? They didn't necessarily say that. Yeah, that was really dumb of me. Okay, this quickly gets harder. How do you stop him from going in both directions? They said levels are solvable without bonus, so that makes me not want to use it at all. Because I want to see... I want to learn and improve and all that. You have to put the first one here, right? Because... Otherwise, he's going to go straight to that one. But if I put that one here, he goes down. If I put it there, he goes up. So it seems like you have to do double here in order to not lose. But here, I'm just similarly dumb. Oh, I have another double? How many doubles do they give me? Oh, was it just the two of them? Maybe. There we go. Okay, so the, the, the difficulty of that level is I, I didn't realize that the double turn happens more than once, or can happen more than once. 
A non-blockable cell, so you can't click on these white ones. It makes a screen shake at you. Okay. So don't let them reach that far, then. Seems like the way to go. Whoops. <laughs> <clears throat> I think we need the double now. There we go. 1.11. How long is chapter one? I wonder. Oh, 24 chapter, uh, 24 levels. Oh, now the whole level's unblockable except for these handful of dark tiles. Okay. Sure. I'm developing a strategy for sure. There's a, there's a pretty straightforward relationship with the fact that it can only move one tile at a time. So you kind of figure out where to go from there. I think yeah, this is already pre-blocked, isn't it? Hmm. Right, so that's why there's a two on there. It's because I can use the double tile twice. Cool. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. So it's equidistant no matter what. It's up to me to choose what to do with my turn, I guess. There's there's definitely a perk where if you're stuck with a wall shape and have to go that strategy, putting your tiles down on every other tile makes it so that you can more easily block every possible option that the enemy has, which I think might be what they're going for here also. Because if you get stuck along the wall, then it can only move one at a time, so it's going to slowly run along the wall as you keep closing each gap in front of it. And so there's there's repeatable patterns you can kind of abuse to stop them. Hmm. See? <laughs> there it goes. Boop, 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 boop. Double mover triangle. Oh, so it moves two tiles? I don't like that. <laughs> no, stop. <laughs> stop that. I don't like it. It's making me uncomfortable. Yeah. Now it moves faster. Oh, it's still moving faster. Probably want to play defensively, right? If I try to make a wall around it, it'll run around the wall. But if I put tiles down... Shit. <laughs> right, forgot that we have double again. They took it away last round. There we go. Hmm. Double mover and you can't block locally. Okay. Uh, that didn't go very well. Yep. Now, no matter wherever I go, it'll it'll it can, if I block this and this, it can go there, and so on. So no matter what, it can make it. So start blocking sooner instead. What if I start by blocking both sides of this? Ah, I can't outmaneuver that. I'm figuring you out, game. Hmm. I was double checking which color was which. Briefly sort of forgot or lost track of it for a second. Um, so now I can do doubles three times. Isn't that interesting? Hmm. You're very vulnerable here. You can only build in these areas. You kind of have to build a solid wall from one side to the other. Like, you have to build a wall from here to here in one way or another. Otherwise, it'll just come right in. It's going north? And did it do that because I put those down? Yeah. If I do this, it'll go around them. Yeah, it's, it's already breached at that point, so you lose. 
Yeah, I can see where this would get difficult over time. I think this is unwinnable already. Yeah. So you can get around. Yep. Oh wait, I, st I still had one more double. Got it. Alright, I'm on board. This seems alright. I am going to take an executive action moment though. Because I got two, I got codes for two Hexa games at like the same time. And I usually do m smaller episodes for these kinds of abstract puzzle games because they it's you you the kind of ideas where you you like you get it you know what i mean relatively quickly along the process really really early on in playing the game you're like oh, okay i get what this game's going for so there's not a lot for me to preview for you guys necessarily there's not a lot for me to do in that aspect uh so i might i that's why i usually make sh uh, shorter episodes because there's not a lot of entertainment but like you, you know if you're into it you can be like oh yeah sure i'll jump on that so here's hex 2 I believe this is a completely different company and series, but I got these codes like at the si <clears throat> at like the same time, and I found that very distracting to the point where I associate them with each other. I'm like, hey, let's get let's make some progress through my backlog. Let's t let's hop in the two similar hex puzzle games that I have back to back and give that a go. Similarly, I don't know how to play this one either. Click to move to a neighboring tile. What? Clear the tiles to win. Okay. Am I that guy? Okay, so we're do we're doing line drawing. It looks like the kind of stuff from like Witness, and you can jump one or two spaces at a time. A little bit like you know, like the Witness and Fidel and uh, Cosmic Express. Or the idea is here is you have to carve your path through the thing. I will say this game immediately has a more appealing aesthetic. Lots of orange wall tiles are are too tall to jump over and don't need to be cleared. Last game was a little dry in its presentation. This one's a little more poppy and energetic and stuff. But the but the pun, the puzzles are fundamentally different. The last one felt like some kind of strategy war game, and this one is very different. Jump on a gray tile twice to remove it. Oh. Jump on white tiles as many times as you want. They don't need to be cleared. All right. But I need them in order to succeed. Ah, you can't, you have to only jump in the directions that the actual sides face. That's important information too. You can turn on a grid in the options menu. Alright, so this one's not teaching me a new idea, it's just telling me about that stuff in general. Don't know if a grid's necessary. The hexagons are pretty straightforward, and you can kind of easily imagine how many empty spaces there are. So I have to click on the gray ones twice. When you start moving fast, the, uh, the changing t uh, pitches of the volumes are kind of addictive a little bit. Hmm, I see. You need to go to the outside via jumping. That's the strategy here. Or not. Maybe you have to be a little bit more clever than that. Ah. Interesting. You can see I got stuck there. So maybe that's the basic idea, but we want to start with these outside ones. How do I get that guy and then escape, though? Ah, just end there and it doesn't matter. 
That's the idea. So my, my predisposition towards games like The Witness admittedly makes this one a little bit more appealing just because I like the find the path style puzzles. The systematic approach to them is kind of fun. Oh, this has quite the complexity ceiling, doesn't it? Aha! Where are we gonna go from here? I mean, well, actually first move is very obvious. Oh! Mistake was made. You can't hop that way. That's not how that works. Not how that works either. Really, the first path seemed way smarter. I can't get back down there now unless that's where I want to exit. Which could be. Aha! The hopping mechanic makes things interesting. And just like that, there's a whole new world. And similarly, there's a whole bunch of them. Oh, look at the level select screens. Ah! Oh, that's just charming. All right, that's elaborate. <laughs> All right, well, th we did, that was hex. We did hex turn. This is hex two. I'm just gonna see if I can find a third puzzle game for a hat trick. All right, now we're playing hex cells. Uh, I don't think this was a press code. The last two I got codes for. This one, I believe, I bought in like a micro bundle. I think there's a trilogy of Hex Cells games. I think there's like a Hex Cells Plus and a Hex Cells Infinite or something. Gonna hop into here. I don't know how to play this one either. 1-1. One, one. Remove orange hexes to reveal the pattern underneath. The number in an empty ha uh, hex tells you how many adjacent hexes are part of the pattern. Left click to mark a hex as part of the pattern. Right click to destroy hexes that aren't part of the pattern. Sorry, there's a weird... S bit distracted by like a spot on my glasses. Stop it! Get out of here. Stop being some kind of human with limitations and shit. Alright, so... I think we're playing Minesweeper? I think that's the idea? Yeah, we're playing Hexagon Minesweeper. Okay. Any more mechanics I need to learn? No. Okay. So two adjacent to this one. Boop, boop. Two adjacent to that one. One. Two, two. There we go. Uh, this one has two adjacents. And that one has two adjacents. This one has two adjacents. These two are kind of four. Those two are kind of four. Those two are kind of... Okay, so these are just... Oh, there we go. There we go. I need to stop double clicking because the, the, the first click I do will reveal new information that I should not remove and so on. Some of these are made simple, but here, here, for example, like this one has two that are adjacent to it. This one also has two that are adjacent to it. The problem being there's one, two, three, four adjacent hexes. So you have to narrow it down. I guess I'm explaining the concept of Minesweeper as if you guys don't- I guess some of you might not know how to play Minesweeper. Somehow. Some of you might exist somewhere. But this one has two that are adjacent. That means that that one can't have this one- this one can't be one because this one has one adjacent and these are the only two possible ones for this one, so boop. Then this one has two, but this one also has two, so that means that these ones are nothing. Haha. <laughs> Out of all three of these, only one of them is correct. 
which could be this one, making it nice and clean between those. This one has zero, so it can't be any of those. Ah, one, so it has to be that, which means that th that's these two for the two, so those are both gone. Two, so this one's gone. Two. Zero. Zero. There we go. All right. This is sad. Th these are always satisfying. There's not a lot to say about it commentary-wise while I'm doing the videos and all that, but hey, you know, moderately amusing Minesweeper, but with hexagons. And uh, it's it's instead of uh, tr having to carve out a randomly generated uh, instead of having to carve out a randomly generated minesweeper grid like normal and starting from scratch, this one's like partially filled in, and you figure out where to go from there. A bit like those Picross games I was playing, except more immediately digestible for people that don't already know how the hell Picross works. I was losing my mind a little bit with that stuff. So that one's one. So that one's that one's safe. That one's safe. What the hell's up with this one? That's weird, right? <laughs> could be either of these ones for that one. This could go in a few different directions. Oh, these ones both have to be blue. That means that one's not. That one's not. What's with the ones that are, that are floating? That one's two, so that one's... okay. What's up with these? Alright, I guess if there's a free-floating one, I might just assume to click on it. Like, yeah, it's probably fine, right? Just go with that. Also, by the way, I didn't- I don't have a key for it, because I didn't reply to the email. Whoops. Uh, there's another game that just came out that called Hexalogic, so that would have been in this episode too, if I had a copy of it. But I didn't respond to the email. I feel bad when people are like, yeah, just send in a request, and I'm like, I have so many. My backlog is so big that I'm like trying to stack games into one episode together. I don't want to ask for more of them because I don't know if I'll ever cover them. And some people come back come, come back to you like, Hey, when are you going to cover that game we sent you a code for? And I'm like, I... <laughs> uh, I can't. I don't know, man. Maybe. Maybe not. Anything could happen. The possibilities are... Uh, I almost said endless, but... You know, the possibilities are binary. There are two outcomes. I do or don't. These are neato. These, these are these are gonna be fun. One, two, three, so that has to be that one. That means you have three and you have three, so that's all them. You have two already, so that's accounted for. And this this seems to be a sort of symmetrical map. You already have two, so all of these are not. Same for you. Two, one, three. Two, one, three. Yeah, it seems adjacent. Uh, not adjacent. Uh, seems symmetrical. That's your two. Get rid of that. Cool. This one has three, so that one's good. This one has four. There we go. These games are so chill. They're becoming increasingly chill with their aesthetic and their audio design. This one particularly... I don't know, does it, it almost weirdly reminds me of, uh... Luminous? Just the, just the minimal... Odd, just something about the, the, the color use and the, uh, the audio aesthetic. Not really any of the other mechanical things, obviously. There's one adjacent to you, so that means that that one's free. That's all clear. Could be either of those. Nope, can't be either of them. That one's got to be that one. Yeah. That has to be the other one of the two. I'm just gonna always click on the free floating ones because you have no way of knowing what they are, so I assume the game's just gonna throw you a bone and let you have it and not make it like a trick question. But you never know for sure.
So how do you reconcile this? This one says one, which could be that one or that one. This one says two, which can only, oh, can only be that one. Right, there's, there's the gap. So that's two, that's two, that's one. So these ones are both out. Cool. The question is, is the level perfectly symmetrical? Or should I manually, no, no, it's not symmetrical at all. This is a different shape on each side. All right, well, that solves that question. I had to very carefully piece this together. Well, oh, that one's a three. Takes care of that. Any of these could be it. But two of these have to be it. Oh, but that one's one, so that means that one's not. Cool. That means that's the two. These both are adjacent to one. Well, this one has to be that one, which means this one can't be one. Yeah! Zero, I think I've not made a mistake yet. And that was the first world? Yep. Then you loop around to the next worlds. Which, this might be the whole game. These games usually aren't too long. All the more reason to spend less time on them is that I... I will just accidentally beat, like, 60% of the game, and then you have nothing to check out for yourself. Super hexagon, I decide that all the other games, too relaxing, too chill, too methodical. Let's just ruin that with not that, but also a hexagon game. This one's going to speak for itself, more or less. Oh boy, uh. I'll, difficulty hard, the easiest difficulty is, is of course, hard mode. Oh boy. So I'm garbage at this game. being that confusing oh my god what was happening <laughs> i'm scared <laughs> so you might have been able to piece together that i have played this game before i'm not good at it i have not practiced it but this is not my first encounter i think we did uh we might have done a let's try of it way back on sad games that just hasn't been on this channel or might it might have been come up in an affair or something i don't know i feel like i've recorded it before but i don't remember when it was i might have just been screwing around with andrew for a bit or something but yeah so there's a game where you press a and d on your keyboard or left and right on a controller uh and you just you just dodge uh a rotates your character counterclockwise and d rotates your character clockwise you're playing as the little triangle and you're just trying to not hit any of the walls and I'm actually kind of confused what even happened a moment ago there. That was very confusing. Let's try other stages though. Hexagoner. <laughs> Alright, well that was harder. <laughs> Fucking hard. Fuck it. Game over. <laughs> I hit the first one. Game over. <laughs> it's impossible. All right. And there's harder difficulties, maybe. Oh my god. Complete them? Complete hexagon, complete hexagon, or key and complete hexagonist to unlock. I will say, I. I don't remember any of these difficulties and modes existing last time I played this game. I don't know if they did. I, th I think it might have just been Super Hexagon, period. But maybe people started beating it? Maybe people started beating the game and they're like, oh shit, they're beating it. Now we'll make more courses. And then you have to like, you know, have more to do at that point. I don't imagine I'll ever beat any of them. I'll give it one more go. Alright. My brain already might getting, be getting taxed by this. It appeals to me on some level because uh, 
when you play a lot of rock band or guitar hero you hit a point where you're not looking directly at the individual things but just sort of zoning out staring vaguely at the screen and just absorbing motion and just re reacting to it and you know like when you first when you watch somebody play a guitar hero or rock band for the first time, they look so, or, or Dance Dance Revolution, they look so startled by every musical note as it's coming by, then they're reacting at the last second, and like if they're playing DDR, they're stomping really hard on each individual thing, and then they're, they're, and DDR is really easy to tell because they'll, they'll stand on that metal platform in the middle with both feet, and then they'll reach out and stomp on each arrow as it comes out, and it'll be a very quick, jerking, like startled reaction because they're so they're not comfortable with the game yet and there's a similar thing going on where you just hear a weird loud thunk as they thunk the strumming bar on the plastic guitar and they probably pressed the fret at the exact same time instead of being comfortably holding it in advance and and there's just like a a panic to it and as you get uh but as you play it more and more part of it's that the fact that when you're new you're just staring at each individual note and you're reacting to each individual note and you're trying to press it exact you're watching as it goes down to the bottom bar and then pressing it around it gets to the bottom bar and you're well then you look at the next one and follow it down but when you play the games enough you're not looking at the individual notes at all you're just seeing the shapes and seeing the patterns and you're just reacting automatically without having to see whether like when they're going to hit the bottom bar because you know when they'll hit the bottom bar and that 30 second session i had earlier even though I haven't played this game in at least probably three or four years or whenever the hell it was new when I briefly played it a tiny bit and didn't practice it all. There's just uh, I fell to that for a little bit and I'm like, oh, here we go. Just fucking like I was just things were just happening and I wasn't thinking anymore and it's great. Again. <laughs> I'm losing it already. All right, guys, this has been our little weird hexagon marathon. I didn't even plan this. We just, the wheel picked one of them, and I'm like, you know what? Let's just do a thing. Thanks for watching. Like always, guys, the first two games I got via developer codes by mail. Uh, third game I had via, I think I bought it in a bundle at some point, but I honestly don't remember. I think it was like a bundle for like a dollar probably and this is super hexagon i had this when it first came out it's all i think most of these games are like two or three dollars on steam and many of them are on actually i think i think all of them might be on phones if you want to play them there thanks for watching like always guys link to the steam pages in the description i'll see you next time